Hello and welcome back to Michelle Holden Art, uh, intuitive art journaling where you discover your true art one layer at a time. And uh, you can probably hear my dog in the background, but uh, he's my studio dog. His name is Dexter and he'll probably settle down in a few minutes when he sees me working at my art journaling table. So this week, I am going to just show you how I explore new things using the same tools, but I have a different intention. Um, I'm using the non-coil Canson watercolor 140 pound nine by 12. And this time I decided, well, let's put the tape around the edge, which would measure to be eight inches by 10 inches. And I also finished putting a layer of the gloss medium, um, sealing the edge where the tape meets the paper. And what inspired me today was, you know what? I just want to experiment with different types of layers and different sequences of layers. And if I get stuck, I have got my art journaling prompts right by my side. And I'm just going to, I don't even want to look at them, so I'll just move those. And don't forget to get yours when you sign up for my email. Um, you can also get your self-reflection PDF, which I will be showing you at the end of this video. So let's get started. So if you've noticed in a few videos, I have kept sort of a series of these um, cardstock or postcard pages that you can buy in a pack. You can get the five by seven size, which I cut in half for smaller. You can get the square. I believe these are six by six and they come in a pack of, of 100 and they really are really cool just to, I use them as, of course, here an experimental, uh, experimentation of layers and that one grouping that I was exploring I like to put on a ring. I hole punch it on the corner. And then, uh, especially if I've used similar, well, the same palette, the same collage papers, the same tools, and maybe even the same intuitive composition where this one would be a quadrant. It's, it's not all over. Uh, sometimes it first shows up horizontal, then it shifts and changes, and you just, I, that's what I love. See, you can see every quadrant is different, but yet related. I love that. And using different bold black and white uh, with really bold colors. And since this card is very smooth, when you use a color shaper over it, and a couple of colors together, you can get this really interesting effect. I don't do, usually do these in one sitting. Sometimes I do. And I usually use my scrap uh, collage paper, which you will build up after you start your intuitive art, your intuitive abstract art journaling practice. Because I really, I came from a representational landscape, watercolor um, type of painting that I did for a long time, and I just wanted to go deeper. I wanted something new, and I wanted something that would really resonate my true voice, and this is what I've developed. So welcome if you are new to my channel, and today we are just going to explore. This is my scrapbook, not my scrapbook, my scraps that I have accumulated and have since thinned out. So you can see 
depending on how much you work every day or not, that you can build up quite a bit. And I even keep my open shapes because they're, it's very interesting to cut. I might even use that today. I usually go through this bin, select a few, but really keep it uh, to a simple selection. I'm liking this, um, these single circles that I create on my deli, deli paper. So let's move on. This morning, I started with just an old text because the way they fade in different colors, uh, depending on the, the type of paper. And I just used the color shaper to um, block in some black. It came out more opaque than I had planned, but it's still really cool. So then I thought, okay, let's keep going. Let's add another layer. So my little Lego piece was sitting beside it. So I thought, let's just add some more. And I like this series of dots at times compared to, you can also use the back of a pencil. Let's get some more paint. Just a little. I'm learning not to put out too much paint all at once. And notice the difference. Of course, there's going to be a difference in size. But there will be a considerable difference in energy. depending on how you space them. And when you have them side by side in a um, juxtaposition, you, their differences really show. I'm really liking these because um, some of the paint is thinner than the other and the circles are very interesting. Such a subtle difference, but you'll only find these things out, what you like, what you don't like when you're experimenting. So look at the difference in the energy. So I'm gonna save that and hopefully I will use it on today's page. So I'm just going to work. I'm going to start so that I can, uh, you can just watch and see how it goes. And then I'll come back in and do some narration so I can speed this up because I just don't want the video to be that long.
Okay, so as you can see, um, my intention today was to experiment with the early layers that I, that I love to start in black and white. And I'm playing with the push and pull, coming in with uh, sort of a transparent large area. I'm uh, thinking of differences, uh, thin, thick, diagonal, horizontal, opposites, so to speak. And I don't know what the next layer is going to be until I build up that layer. So it'll tell me. So this is really, uh, I'm trying to stay in the present moment and really use what's there. When you get stuck, this is where to bring in the art prompts. So let's pick one. Oh, pencil lines. Now, if you don't like your art prompt, well, you can just put it back, but I'm going to use it. It's something that I would not have thought of at this stage. So, okay, let's try another one. <clears throat> this is totally unplanned. I have not rearranged them. Oh, but I really like this one. Big collage torn. Okay. <clears throat> Already have enough black and white. I'm just not thinking that that is what I like. But I always have something cool. This is deli paper left over on your palette. Um, after I've rolled some more either on my jelly plate printer or some other paper and I just turn it over and make this really cool piece of collage, which is totally unplanned. Oh, I really would like that. So uh, it's torn, yes, but I want to tear it. I don't want to miss out on these really nice black, orange, and blue. I was thinking now's the time to bring in some color. So, that's usually the piece I put on the edge. And notice when you, oh, there it is right there. Put that down over a very bold line or really high contrast area, that's where it really uh, shows its transparency. So I'm going to do that, but I'm going to use the gloss, the, the liquid, not the um, heavy. I'm finding the liquid uh, works really nicely with the pastel, I mean, sorry, with the deli paper. And of course, that's why your layers need to be dry. Now, I'm not going to take this to the end today because it's not my intention. Uh, I may, I'm going to tear it from the pad and work on it later because I just wanted to experiment with some starts. And that's why I've called this video its title. Layers of starts, starting layers. Wow, and you see how it even shows more as it melts in. Really love that. Okay, so I'm seeing where I can come in and pull out the colors that I'm really, really loving and we have this uh, water-soluble oil pastels that I love. I'm going to mix in a little bit of orange. I may come in with water. I might just leave the marks as they are. Okay, loving that.
Okay. Okay. Oops. A little much, but that's okay. Overlapping is another really good thing to do. If you don't start with overlapping, eventually doing it with some transparent uh, collage and um, or stencils. Okay. So I am going to come in with this. loving this shape and how it brings the eye in and around so I love that Adding some bright colors here and there. Somebody told me, okay, I usually, if you've seen my other videos, I love doing repeated squares, but in odd numbers. So now it is time to get the heavier out. just going to put them randomly because we have things that are in a grid. Now the opposite would be sort of a random pattern. So this is pattern. It might look cool and I don't want it in a five. So we'll do this because I want to bring the eye down. I saw that. Uh, one. I think I'll do six, seven. Notice I'm leading the eye down. So there's your, it's a combination of using your intuition and this build where before I would not have done that. It would have been just pure, just do something and I would do it, but really not know why it works. So you'll build that knowledge and of course your repertoire of marks as you go. All right, so I'm loving this blue, but you see I'm not liking it. It's right smack in the middle of this page, so I need to bring it out here. No. So now we're having too much pattern, but I love that transparency. circles but they're cropped might work marks but I just wanted to bring the eye out with some blue 
This is, uh, has a metallic on it. I'm loving this piece. Pretty bold for me. <laughs> okay. So now I see that there's there's a lot of pattern. So now I need, okay, well, what, what's the opposite? Well, I need to quiet down some areas. Um, I might even join these two areas just with some China marker. know if that works, but that's okay. Um, when you add water to these pastels, it's really cool. Okay, so that's all I wanna do for now. I'm gonna dry everything and let's remove the tape. Okay. So since I started with this, I didn't end up using this section. I did use this, but you can always come in at the end and I'm going to put the white dots near the white transparent a collage with the circles. I'm just thinking this would be a great um, difference being white on black. And just a little bit. 
So I'm gonna go past the edge. And if I made another two rows, I think it would be too much. Yes, so I'm gonna stop there. So the whole purpose of me using these, or this particular style of watercolor paper was to spin it around. And I got caught up in what I was doing and sharing my thinking, and that's okay. But when you do spin it, it helps remove your attachments to certain patterns, marks, colors in certain areas. So then if you did this, this is looking really cool this way too. You just discover it's just a new perspective uh, and it works. And even your large canvases, you want to do that too. If you're planning to take this journal practice that far, I am, so stay tuned. And as you can see this way, wow. I really like it the tall way. You can see some clear quadrant areas. Oh yeah, okay. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Many starts of layering, different kinds of layering, push, pull to begin your pages in black and white. And uh, don't forget to sign up for my email and join my mailing list to get your um, journaling prompts, your self-reflection PDF, and I will be writing all about this page. Using my PDF, so I'm going to put today's date. I am painting in joy and peace, and that's what I like to use and maybe even in a higher vibration. That's a good direction to want to go. And my layers, so I need to remember the order of my layers. Well, you know, close enough, not exact. My colors. And I was just focusing on black and white early layers. And that's what I'll be writing in my intuitive Aww. art journaling reflection sheet. So I hope you get yours. And I will see you in the next video.